Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition. In this episode, we're going to be playing through the turn replay of December 28th, 1941, and we're going to be issuing our orders for December 29th. Uh, this is our play-by-email game against XTRG. XTRG is playing as the Japanese, and yours truly is playing as the Americans uh, and the Allies. Um, you can see here, we're starting off the turn here at a nighttime uh, anti-submarine effort against some Japanese submarines that are uh, just off of Pearl Harbor. And you can see our destroyers are actually dropping depth charges, which has been a bit of a challenge for us to actually get depth charges on target. So uh, this is some improvement, even if we're not actually doing much in the way of damage. Uh, meanwhile, I-4 is ooh, hitting the uh, Mount McKinley with torpedoes here. Fuel cargo is burning and apparently attacking her on the surface as well. So that doesn't look good. Three torpedo hits and four shell hits. Meanwhile, the I-123 is attacking the light boiler off the coast of Batavia, AO-10-2. Again, it looks like on the surface, lots of torpedoes being used against uh, this ship. One shell hit, two torpedo hits. She's going to go down too. She only holds like 1,000 fuel oil, though, so she's not really worth much. And the I-165 is using torpedoes against an AKL, which will probably sink as well here to the west of Oosthaven. So a good night for Japanese submarines, uh, by all accounts. Uh, and uh, temporary flotation repairs failing aboard the Prince of Wales. Another submarine attack on an AKL here to the east of Oosthaven, this by the I-165. And two torpedo hits, another AKL going down. Uh, good thing these ships are not really worth much at all. Uh, meanwhile, Japanese subs off the coast of Australia have just hit the AS Platypus, which is a submarine tender. Good God. This Japanese turn is just sub-central, folks. Wolfpack attack. Uh, two torpedoes into the AS, and that's going to sink. That's actually the most valuable of the ships they've sunk so far, probably. Um, fast transport is offloading off the coast of Mersing. 35 Japanese casualties landing some additional troops. So the Japanese are reinforcing their position at Mersing. Um, all right. I'm assuming it's just light forces again, though. Only 35 casualties. It'll be interesting to see more Japanese subs again. This time off Palembang. One torpedo on an AK. That one probably won't sink. More subs? Another submarine attack, this one on another AK off of Palembang. Two torpedoes, that one's going down. That was the same one that was hit the turn before. This is an incredibly effective turn for the Japanese submarines. Fortunately, most of the ships they've sunk really have very little value for us. A 1,000 ton fleet oiler is basically worthless. And a, it, it, it can't even carry enough fuel to evac fuel out of like the Dutch East Indies. Can't carry enough fuel really to refuel even a battleship. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's not too disastrous. Meanwhile, the Japanese are bombing uh, Singapore again. I don't see any zeros, interestingly enough. Uh, our cap is a bit diminished due to fatigue and continued use. He's bringing in 29 Oscars, which I'm not too worried about, like, being too effective. Um, you know, they might do some damage, but their uh, firepower is a bit weaker, so hopefully they don't shoot too many of our aircraft down. And they just got a hawk right there as I was bemoaning their effectiveness. We're going to fast forward through because this is going to be a really long uh, engagement there. 22 Sally's made it through. It looked like two got hit by flak. Uh, so they lost one Oscar and five Sally's. Okay, I think that's a fair, you know, they, I, I guess I should have checked to see what they did in the way of damage against us. I didn't really look at that. Japanese dive bombers going against our troops here north of Hankow. More Japanese attacks at near Wuchou, or Wuchou, I think it is. Japanese are bombing an airfield near Medan. More bombing near Wuchou. More Sonyas over Hankow. Our Blenheims are bombing, I don't know what they're bombing there, maybe some ground troops? On the northern area of uh, Malaya. Uh, meanwhile, we'll fast forward through the recon phase. More bombing at Wuchow. Not a lot of air activity this turn. There was the one raid over Singapore, which he brought out over 20 more Sallies. 
We shot down at least another five. We'll see what the post-turn report says. It does look like there's a slight Japanese cap over Mersing. We've ordered our torpedo bombers in to try and hit the Japanese ships here, landing troops at Mersing. So uh, just for all of your pleasure, we will be bombing the Japanese ships here. We'll see what kind of damage we do. We'll have to get through the cap first. We do have some Warhawks and some Buffaloes, and there's not a whole lot of Japanese Zeros. So all 30 of our torpedo bombers make it through. Seven Swordfish, 23 Build-A-Beasts. And they're trying to drop torpedoes on Japanese torpedo boats. Not very uh, likely to get a hit there, I don't think. Um, you can see here our planes are approaching, and they are dropping. You can hear the splashes. Well, I don't know if you can hear the splashes, but you, I can hear the splashes of the uh, torpedoes. We did lose a Vildebeest there from Flak, but uh, doesn't look like our aircraft are doing much in the way of damage. Maybe we can get a torpedo hit on a destroyer. That sure would be nice. But uh, so far, <laughs> nothing. Oh, God. So our, our 30 swordfish made it through, one was, or 30 torpedo bombers made it through, one was it destroyed by flak, two warhawks, three buffaloes destroyed. Uh, we attacked four uh, torpedo boats and two destroyers did no damage. Uh, in case you were wondering, yes, all of our aircraft were attacking with Mark uh, 12 torpedoes, and they did no damage. Uh, the cap that they were engaged with was the Zuiho-1 with AM-620s, so that's a light Japanese carrier. We've seen their light carriers operating in northern area of Malaya, so this is uh, presumably some of the aircraft from that uh, carrier, either transferred to the shore or still on board the ship. So that was disappointing. A 30 torpedo bomber strike does no damage, but again, very fast torpedo boats, very fast destroyers, very maneuverable out at sea. That's a tough order for any torpedo boat, or, or sorry, torpedo bomber to hit their target. Meanwhile, that's probably about the turn. We still have our land combat phase to go, so we'll go ahead and fast forward through this, and we'll see what uh, becomes of the land combat phase. Japanese delivered attack north of Hankou against two Chinese corps, which are actually in the process of falling back to Ichang. So uh, both of our units end up retreating anyway. Uh, they did suffer 7,000 casualties against the Japanese, but the Japanese actually lost 1,000 men too. Uh, only three squads destroyed though. Meanwhile, more bombardments occurring at Wuchou. Uh, we lost some casualties there. A Japanese deliberate attack by the 16th Division here against Manila, which I think has w only one level of fort. Uh, looks like the Japanese are gonna take the base. They are. So, folks, the city of Manila has fallen to the Japanese. That is not a good outcome for us. Um, it looks like we lost 2,400 men. One of the units was destroyed. One of the units retreated. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they lost 300 men. So that's uh, a single Japanese infantry division just drove us out of Manila and took the city. Good thing is Clark Field's fortifications have expanded to level 2. So hopefully that at least gets us uh, a little bit of progress on the... Um, on the defensive frontier. And that's going to do it for this turn here. So we're getting into the phase where it's just kind of telling us uh, calculating spoilage, calculating fuel, supply, unloading ships, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so this is just going to kick us out of the game here in just a second. So I will catch you guys back on the flip side and uh, we'll see how bad that turn really was. That was a rough turn from a torpedo perspective. Japanese uh, transport, or sorry, Japanese submarines, incredibly effective that turn. Fortunately, only two of the ships they sunk were of any value, and one of them I had sent to Palembang, mainly as a sacrificial lamb, if you will. So uh, we'll see We'll see what things look like here in a moment. I'll catch you guys on the flip side uh, in just a moment. All right, let's start with the good news here this turn. Uh, the good news is that uh, Singapore is down to zero damage. There is no damage at all, despite all of the air raids that XTRG has launched against Singapore. It is in perfectly good health. Let's start with some additional good news. If we go to the aircraft losses tab, we will see, and we're going to ignore one piece of bad news, but we're going to see here that we claimed another 14 KI-21 Sally bombers. That brings the total claimed tally of his bombers to 110, and of those 110, about 70 to 80 of them have been shot down in the last four days or so, four or five days. So his air forces in and around the Malay Peninsula, especially his bombing formations with Sally's, must be a bloody shambles. Um, the bad news, we did lose seven buffaloes last turn. He actually lost six GM-41 Bettys, apparently. He also lost four Oscars. We lost three Warhawks uh, and two Babs, or he lost two Babs. We lost two Vildebeests. All in all, not the end of the world. 
The one thing that really sucked this turn is we lost 19 P40B Warhawks, 18 of them on the ground. And you may ask, where were those uh, Where were those destroyed? The 18 aircraft on the ground, he didn't do that at Singapore. We didn't even have 18 P40Bs on the ground. Well, if you remember that AKL he sunk, the Mount Mary, just outside of Pearl Harbor. Yeah, she was carrying 25 or 18 P40B Warhawks. That air group was destroyed. So if we go ahead and we click on this group, we'll see here she had 18 P-40B Warhawks. They were en route to the South Pacific. And unfortunately, um, yeah. And apparently I can't reform it either. There's other air groups in here that we can reform. I don't know why we can't reform this one. It's gray. Huh. So, all in all, we lost 37 aircraft, he lost 27, but his 27 were lost with crews, 18 of our P-40Bs were lost on a ship, and none of those uh, pilots were killed. So you can see here, we, didn't lo we only lost 2 KAs, 4 wounded, 0 missing, so apparently the crews on board that ship that was sunk all survived. Additionally, we have three flying aces, D.L. Obert, G.H. Armstrong, and J.L. Brownwell, all in the 17th Pursuit Squadron of the 24th Pursuit Group, currently stationed out of Singapore flying P-40E Warhawks. Um, aircraft group, where's group destroyed? Ground units destroyed? No. Um, yeah, it doesn't let me apparently reform them. I wonder if maybe we wait a turn if it'll let us, or maybe we don't have enough political points. I'm not sure. Yeah, the cost is 125. So it's 125 political points to reform that squadron, and we can't do that right now because we only have 76. That's okay. We'll have enough soon. Um, so all in all, that was an unfortunate loss of 40 P-40s, but really it doesn't factor into the equation too much because they hadn't really gotten anywhere yet. Additionally, if we go to ships sunk and we focused on last turn, we will see that his Navy did very well. Uh, his submarines, all of our losses last turn were submarines. He sunk the Mount McKinley, a 12 VP transport, the AS Platypus, an Australian submarine tender, 11 victory points, the AK Hinsang, 8 victory points, a British troop, a British transport, and then the AO Tan, which has a value of 4, but if we look at it, this thing was worthless. 1,700 tons, uh, carries 1,500 fuel supply, only makes 12 knots. This thing is just honestly worthless. That's okay that we lost it. And then the Benotan and the Latusha, uh, both uh, AKLs that we lost, so no big, uh, no big deal there. Meanwhile, if we look at the ground units destroyed last turn, um, do we have a date? Where's the date killed? Right here. We lost the 108th Second Base Force. Was that last turn? No. We lost the 71st uh, Filipino Infantry Division, uh, and we can't recall them, unfortunately. So it's uh, two Filipino Infantry Regiments. It's an unfortunate thing, but, you know, not the end of the world to lose them as Manila fell. Uh, meanwhile, we should probably also look into recalling some of our destroyed units here. Uh, we can uh, call some of these up. I don't know what these guys are worth. This, these guys were killed. The 6th Marine uh, Defense Battalion was killed on Wake Island. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have uh, reactivate them. They'll reform in San Francisco in 21 to 36 days. Uh, meanwhile... We also want to recall the Winnipeg Battalion. Uh, actually, no, let's look at assault value. I want to recall the units that have the highest assault value, which apparently isn't much in here. The 1st Marine Defense Battalion should have more than that. Yeah, they definitely will. I guess this is all we get for free, the one squad each, so maybe that's the value of the unit based off of what you just get for free. But we're going to go ahead and reform the 1st Marine Defense Battalion as well which was also destroyed. Um, and then, wow, 360 points to recall the FMSV Brigade. I think these guys were at Hong Kong. It's a large brigade that's a good formation. We don't have anywhere near enough political points to reform them. But the Kulun Brigade here, uh, 72 in British infantry sections, 42, they were lost near Hong Kong. 
we're going to reform them also. So in 21 to 36 days, they will reform at Karachi. And I think that's all we'll do right now for reforming units. We'll keep the other 32 political points that we have in the back of our pocket, and we will uh, move forward from there, I think. Would these guys reform in Karachi too? No, they reform at Aden. Winnipeg Grenadiers reform at Canada. Rifles of Canada reform it uh, there. Canadian Infantry Section. The problem is they're attached to a restricted headquarters, I think. Anyway, um, so that's the situation with our ground units. Meanwhile, some people had asked about our ship availability. So we do have actually the USS Yorktown, the uh, fleet carrier, will be ready in San Diego tomorrow. She will come with 16 F4 F3 Wildcats. Uh, the group does grow up to 27. It'll come with two groups of Dauntlesses and one group of Devastators. Uh, so a pretty solid aircraft carrier there of the Yorktown uh, class. And uh, I think that's all that we get tomorrow. No, actually, we get a couple transports here at Cristobal. We get a tanker at Abaddon and a tanker at Cape Town. Uh, in addition to that, we've got some patrol ships that are going to be ready in a couple of days after that. And in three days, we'll get a fleet oiler, a British uh, submarine, actually, that will come on board, I think, at Colombo... Uh, no, Aiden. In any event, it's a British submarine. It's good quality sub. And you can see here just some of the other upcoming ships here soon. Meanwhile, if we go to... Uh, where do we want to go? What else do we want to look at? Um, ground reinforcement schedule. What else is coming up here? The 4th Marine Defense Battalion at the Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor is organizing. Uh, the uh, AHQ Far East Fleet in Malaya uh, is forming in Singapore in two days. The uh, some armored units here for the Dutch. The uh, Mobile Ende Battalion is going to be forming in two days at Bangdong. Um, what does this consist of? Eight Overwagen wagons, uh, nine 180 millimeter coastal defense guns. Interesting. Is that going to be a static unit? Yeah, it will be. Where is this base? I don't know. Uh, bang dong, where are you? If we go to list bases. Oh, those are air units. Clicking on the wrong buttons there. All right, so hide the enemy, oh, no, hide the enemy bases. Scroll here, th through here. Bangdong Air Force Base. Huh. All right. So it's going to be on the Java, the island of Java. All right. Um, meanwhile, in terms of the Dutch East Indies, we have been sucking fuel out of them. Uh, we have 84,000 fuel at Perth. We have an additional 17, about 18,000 uh, fuel offloading at Perth. In addition to that, a large amount of fuel from Perth has actually been transported to Sydney. Sydney's fuel level was 60,000 last turn. It's up to 120,000 now. Uh, meanwhile, we have one tanker task force finishing up offloading here. Uh, these guys brought in about 10,000 fuel to Karanis, and that also is sort of flowing to the East Coast industrial points here in Australia. So all of this fuel, when it arrives, one, it helps us support naval operations uh, off the island of Australia, but it also uh, helps fuel the Australian economy, which is very thirsty for supply and fuel, uh, or sorry, very thirsty for fuel oil, which it can turn into supplies. Uh, meanwhile, on the Fiji line, we're making some progress here. Nomaya just turned over its first fortification, so it's now fortification level one. Not very uh, intense, but it's worth something, I guess. Uh, we also have started offloading a lot of these uh, pieces of equipment uh, to the island or to the base at Nomaya. We still don't have these six-inch coastal guns offloaded yet, but we at least have uh, 146 uh, infantry assault values between the coastal regiments, militia, the New Caledonia detachment of French troops, which are actually all militia. Lame. Uh, the 39th Australian Battalion, which is actually Australian regular infantry. Uh, and then the 4th Australian Brigade, which has a lot of its militia ashore. In addition to that, we are bringing further troops ashore. We have 
3,500 more troops coming ashore uh, currently on task forces that are docked. And we have some additional supply coming ashore there as well. Uh, we've got about 3,000 supply currently coming ashore at Nomaya, so we should have around 7,500 supply when all's done. Uh, we also just formed a few more supply task forces in Australia to get reinforcements or supplies to Nomaya. Additionally, we've got over 10,000 soldiers coming, or sorry, over 9,000 additional soldiers coming ashore at Fiji. Uh, that means we've already actually started to get large portions of our troops ashore. The 8th New Zealand Brigade was formed out of three New Zealand regiments already on the island of Fiji, but the 161st American Infantry Regiment is already largely ashore. Its supporting equipment is taking longer because the unit isn't uh, uh, docked up here. Actually, we should change its objective to Suva. Um, but overall, actually, these guys should not be Christmas Island. You should also be Suva. But overall, uh, these guys are coming ashore. We have over 267 assault value here, and it is all regular infantry between the 8th New Zealand and the 161st Re Infantry Regiment. So very strong uh, formations there, as well as quite a bit of uh, engineers uh, to help strengthen the base. We're up to almost 10,000 supply in the base, and then with the troops all coming ashore, we've got another, what is that, 15, 18, 21, about 22,000 additional supply. I know you guys had some concerns with, with our supply supply level. We'll have about 30,000 supplies here on Suva here very shortly. Additionally, uh, the soldiers at Nadi have sort of repositioned here. So we now have two Australian brigades, the 7th and the 9th, located at Nadi. We also have the 1st Australian Brigade unloading, and it's already gotten a good deal of its uh, combat infantry ashore, so that we're up to 212 uh, infantry value at Nadi. The Queen Elizabeth can't dock, but she is uh, in the process of unloading troops. She's gotten almost all the militia troops off, uh, almost all the combat engineers off. The heavier equipment's more challenging because it basically has to be rowed out uh, to the to the docks to, um, uh, you know, rowed out to the docks to get it uh, get it ashore, I guess. Um, so there's that, the 9th, 7th. If we take a look at the 5th Division. Nadi Klonkuri? Where the hell is that? Ugh. I thought we almost had an Australian Infantry Brigade formed up here, or division formed up here. Fifth, first. The first is almost formed up, right? These guys are all on task forces. These guys are at Nadi. So the 18th Australian Battalion is where? Task Force 87, which is closing in on Nadi. Okay, so that task force is closing in on Nadi, so we should hopefully get that division formed up before we deal with too much in the way of Japanese attacks on Fiji, although we'll see. Um, the 383rd is also heading there. Uh, the 287th is heading there. The 412th is heading there. The 284 is heading there. Is actually already there. Uh, the 287 we already looked at. Okay, so we've got additional reinforcements on their way to Nadi. Uh, we also have started unloading some additional aircraft at Suva. So our first SBD-1 Dauntlesses have unloaded at Suva. There are 19 of them that have come ashore. Unfortunately, because of the way the air transport works, they're all packaged up. None of them are ready for combat yet. You can see all of them are marked as damaged because essentially they're being assembled after being taken off the ships. The good news is these guys should be ready in a day or two. Uh, all but two of the planes should be ready inside two days to fight. Those aren't the only aircraft coming ashore at Suva. We have a squadron of F-4F uh, Wildcats that will also be coming ashore. Uh, I think that's over here with a car. No... The VMF-211 on the St. Mithel uh, with its 11 F4F Wildcats. I thought, we had, I thought we had 11, not 10. But in any event, they'll be coming ashore here as well. Probably in the next turn because this is the one task force in the port of Fiji that is docked. So they should more or less finish up next turn. Meanwhile, Pago Pago is up to 1,200 fuel. Oh, uh, so our airfield has expanded to, well, is at level 2. It's close to expanding to level 3. Our fortifications are in the process of being expanded to level 3, but they're at level 2. Nadi's fortifications currently are at level 1, but they're almost to level 2. We may want to move one of those base force units in Suva over to Nadi as well to make sure we don't have too soft of a squishy of a target there for him to land at. But in any event, we've got over 500 assault value on the island of Fiji. 
uh, and we've got reinforcements coming as well. So uh, if we move east, we'll see there's a lot of transports and fuel and all that kind of jazz. Uh, but we'll also see, if I can find where the hell I need to look, we'll also see some task forces bearing some troops. Uh, as I know I've mentioned to you guys before, the 8th Marine Regiment is on the way to Pago Pago, probably still a week or so away, and then the 100, or sorry, the 34th Infantry Regiment as well as quite a few support units are on the way to Pago Pago as well. So by the end of the day, Pago should have a, a defense value of around 400, uh, and it'll be comparable to the defensive strength of Suva with a wide range of defense and support personnel, and it already has some coastal guns here as well. So by the next inside of a week, depending on what uh, XTRG does, Su or Fiji, both bases at Fiji will be very strong uh, and able to resist, hopefully, a Japanese landing, with the exception of if he keeps the carriers around a pound for like a week. And then uh, Pago as well. The real question is going to be Nomaya. But even now, Nomaya is much stronger than it was uh, with 146 uh, garrison value here. So, um, you know, ideally he'll give us another week before he attacks. I'm not sure if he'll do that or not. But at least by then we should have uh, this line pretty firmly uh, fortified. The one weak spot is Comac up here on the northern tip of Caledonia or bases like Tana. Uh, which have some substantial air capacity, like Tana could build up to a level 5 airfield, Comac could build up to a level, level 7 airfield, a Fate could build up to a level 5, he could go for Espiritu Santos, uh, and this is really where he should go, is for Luganville. Uh, he should go here because it can be a level 3 port and a level 5 airfield, but all of those will take time in the order of weeks to build up to a state that allows him to really project power in this area too effectively, uh, and I think he's probably going to go for the cheap route and try and get to Nomaya or Fiji first uh, in an effort to sort of uh, not have to wait. Japanese engineers aren't as good as the Allies at building stuff quickly. Meanwhile, we also landed one Indian brigade on uh, Port Moresby, bringing the defense value up to close to 200. Uh, and we've got some supplies there. We're bringing in some additional supplies. We're expanding the port. We're expanding the fortifications uh, there as well. And then we're also moving, and this was a couple turns ago, but we've also got another brigade of about 100 assault value on the way. I have it targeted toward Comac, but it's going to go to Nomaya. Uh, I just put it there as sort of a, a convenience factor. So inside about three days, it should be at Nomaya. So we'll see if we've got three days to get another 104 assault value there. But if we do, we'll have almost 400 assault value at Nomaya. We'll have three, 200 and 300 on Fiji, so a total of 500 on the island, respectively. And then Pago will have around 400 as well. So we'll basically be requiring uh, all things being equal, which they're not because a lot of our troops are militia, but at least in terms of uh, if he was trying to gain uh, assault value superiority over us, he'd have to commit uh, at least uh, a regiment and some additional support troops to each one of these islands. Realistically, he'd probably want to deploy a whole division to each one of these islands in order to assure success. And again, New Caledonia, in my mind, is the least valuable of these. It's the most valuable in terms of what it can be built up to, but its strategic position doesn't actually eliminate New Zealand. So he will basically play havoc on the whole of the northern Australian coast and prevent us from being able to supply places like Brisbane, Marlborough, Bundaberg, Rockhampton, or Bowen. But the thing is, we can route supply ships wide south offload in New Zealand, transfer to new ships, and then sort of form a shuttle service to southern Australia. New Caledonia doesn't do that. Fiji is actually better positioned. It's further east and would require an even greater diversion of our supply ships way further south. Uh, new Caledonia is almost too far west in order to really do that because by the time you get to New Caledonia, you're already at New Zealand in the south. Um, you know, most of these transports are sort of going to, you know, be moving this way by Fiji and moving south, or even if they're going along here, they're going to be skirting the edge of his air cover, uh, whereas, you know, New Caledonia is further west and not as, quite as able to target there. If we move east, we'll see here our battleships, uh, which are headed back to the west coast, are making progress. So far, none of them have been torpedoed, so these guys are moving uh, east to the west coast. We've also formed up multiple anti-submarine convoy or anti-submarine task forces here, some new ones, and we've ordered the existing ones to stay at sea to continue trying to keep the pressure up on the Japanese submarines here uh, to try and cut down on some of these submarine attacks. Additionally, if we go back to Java, we've issued orders to our surface vessels there uh, to form a couple of anti-submarine warfare task forces to try and clear the, the channels near Oosthaven where the, frankly, this is all very good anti-submarine warfare territory because it's so shallow. So the hope has to be that, uh, that we can uh, have some success here. 
Meanwhile, we're going to have, or these guys are already on uh, anti-submarine warfare patrols at max levels, uh, so that's good. I'm standing down the aircraft at Dejambi here and just switching them all over to training. Their fatigue levels are getting a little bit high and they could use a rest. Um, and I'm also, um, what else am I doing? Kind of holding Pat in China. We're pulling these troops who are just driven back from Yichang back to Yichang. Um, yeah, so China's kind of a, in a stand pat situation. Uh, we've got some troops on the way to Johnston Island, a Marine Defense Battalion to strengthen that base. We've got another Marine Defense Battalion on the way to Palmyra to strengthen that base as well. Uh, and I'd like to send one to Christmas Island in a few turns here as well to strengthen that base. So we're trying to strengthen this three uh, base chain here to the south um, and, and what have you. One interesting thing is we did spot a Japanese uh, convoy here to the northeast of Rabaul, uh, moving southeast, so moving in this general direction. This could be his invasion fleet, uh, but it's still a little bit of a ways out, so I don't think anything will happen next turn. We'll see, but I don't think it will. Meanwhile, our submarines are almost in position to try and strangle Kwajalein. Uh, the interesting thing is with these uh, ships spotted here at Truk and also moving down here, perhaps his base is, is, is centered around uh, Truk, but the last time we saw the carriers were near Kwajalein. So we're forming a ring of subs over here to try and interdict any supplies that may be flowing south. I may, if nothing materializes, shift some submarines west to Truk as well. Uh, but we've really got a bunch of subs all kind of swarming in here on the Marshall Islands, hopefully to uh, really play havoc on his logistics. Um, additionally, we've got uh, some subs that are evacuating the Philippines. These guys are badly damaged. Uh, some of you did ask about the feasibility of pulling troops out of the southern islands in the Philippines. I double-checked all of these regiments are Filipino army units, which means as soon as the Philippines fall, we get absolutely no infantry replacements. So there's really no point in doing that because these guys will essentially be shells of units once the Philippines fall. They're better off just staying here, trying to build up some fortifications, which are almost to level two, and trying to hold out as long as possible. Um... Meanwhile, I still can't get supply to EBA, and I can't get these 12 P-40E Warhawks repaired, which is very frustrating. I've got quite a bit of you know supply ordered to go here, and it just won't flow there. So I don't know what's going on, but I just can't get those guys supplied. Uh, meanwhile, Manila fell. Our armored units here being ordered to drive south to Lucina to see if we can cut off his advance. Um, Manila probably had a lot of fuel there. We've got a lot of uh, PT boats at Manila as well. Uh, we'll move some of them to Bataan. We're also trying to work on Bataan's supply line. Uh, you can see I figured out Bataan's supply limit's 32,000. Any supply above 32,000 and you'll have spoilage. We're well above 32,000. We're at 53,000. Uh, we actually lost about 1,000 last turn to spoilage. Uh, but we've got another 9,000 on the way. If we can continue getting them in into Bataan, that's a big question, right? Like, he could easily cut uh, Bataan off with air cover uh, and prevent us from being able to get uh, get aircraft or get ships in there. But so far he hasn't, and we've brought over 15,000 additional supplies to uh, the island or the base at Bataan, which is a huge mistake on his part not closing that gap. Meanwhile, uh, Bataan's defenses are up to level 3, a good deal on the way to level 4. We're trying to get that airfield capacity up to reduce our spoilage, um, and we're at level 2 uh, defenses at Clark. Um, Clark is reasonably well held. I'm confident that if he does move uh, on Clark, we'll give him a little bit of a bloody nose. I don't think he'll take there with one division. The main question is supply, but our troops have at least enough supply for one major day's fighting. You can see all these units' supplies in the, in the white, so it's not red. Um... Yeah, that's probably about it for this turn. The Prince of Wales is still sailing west. She's suffered a little bit of additional float damage up to 58, but nothing critical. She should be fine uh, moving toward the off-map position. Uh, the Repulse is already off-map and well on its way, probably a, maybe a week and a half to two weeks away from uh, Cape Town here uh, So and, and being repaired. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think... We're dragging on a little bit long here, so, well, not that long. 
But uh, I think that'll probably do it for this episode. I showed you guys the air units. I showed you guys the ships that are on the way. Uh, I also showed you some of the destroyed ground units. We recalled some of those units. And we looked at our current situation on the Fiji line in the south. Um, I am still marching my troops in Singapore to Mersing. We did get one additional brigade there. Uh, and I'm trying to pull the 22nd Australian Brigade out so it can re rest and refresh in another base here. But we're up to 340 to uh, supply if or sorry uh, combat value if you're if you're kind of counting so actually part of me wants to see if we can do a bombardment attack just to see what the enemy has in place so we'll order these two brigades that have supply to bombard the enemy additionally the ninth Australians do have some guns so we'll hold off on pulling them out. So we're going to bombard with these three units, just so we can see if he really brought any additional troops. We're still only seeing three enemy infantry units with 3,600 troops. So he may not have that much there. And uh, and that's the situation, guys. That's what December 29th is looking like uh, for yours truly in his epic quest against XTRG. So we'll go ahead and save the turn, and uh, I'll... Finish off my orders here offline, and we'll see what the combat results show next time around. But until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching, and I'm out. Oh, by the way, guys, one thing I forgot to show you, the SIGINT reports. We got actually some very valuable information from intelligence this turn. We found out that the 15th of the 144th Infantry Regiment is planning for an attack on Nomaya. Uh, and we also got intelligence that the 1st of the 144th Infantry Regiment is planning for an attack on Tulagi. So we know that two different components of the 144th Japanese Infantry Regiment are planning to attack Tulagi, which is the port in uh, the southern area of the Solomons near Guadalcanal, uh, right here. And we know that uh, another portion of them are preparing for an attack on Nomaya. Which definitely means that the Japanese are going to make a move, I think, toward Nomaya. He's probably going to just island chain, you know, down this this uh, list of bases, uh, at least for some of them. You know, his, his, his track record has been jump all the way down here uh, or jump all the way out here without filling in the rear. But at least we know he's going for Tulagi and then maybe also Nomaya and, and some additional bases in here. But that does... Uh, you know, tell us that we are right to reinforce these locations. It's just hopefully we can get all the troops in place before the actual uh, attacks manifest themselves. Um, radio t transmission 9372. Where is that? That's way north, isn't it? Yeah, 9372, right? Or west. Yeah, that's like way the hell up here. Okay, so that's not relevant. Um, meanwhile, anything else we found out? 85, 49, that's even further. Uh, planning for an attack on Pao Tao. Where is Pao Tao again? That's Wu Chang. Isn't Pao Tao? No, oh, Pao Tao's right here. So it looks like he's bringing some additional reinforcements here to Pao Tao. Um, we've got... Are these guys moving anywhere? No. Alright, so we've got troops in place as well. Let's switch them over to combat. Just in case he shows up, maybe we can give him a bloody nose. 457. Was that a whole division that was preparing for that attack? Uh, no, it's a cavalry brigade, so we might be able to give him a bloody nose if he shows up, because it's not a whole division. 140th Infantry Regiment's located at 11045. Where is 110? Oh, but again, that's way north. Okay. Um... Heavy volume of radio traffic at Kamran Bay and at 128, 129. Now, this one is further south. 
128, 129. So a heavy volume of radio traffic was discovered here between Ocean Island and Nehru Island. And we also know that there's Japanese vessels up here moving southeast. So he may actually have some naval vessels as far south as Ocean and Nehru Island, uh, which tells us maybe the timetable's a little bit accelerated, depending on if they're moving. But we know there's naval vessels here. We know that he's planning for Nomaya. We know that he's planning for Tulagi. And these operations are probably in flight, so that I would guess early January is when we'll see these things unfold. Anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to jump back in and tell you. Uh, so that was sort of my Easter egg at the end of the stream. I'll go ahead and save again. And uh, until next time, guys, thanks again. Uh, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, in a very Lord of the Rings style second ending, I'm out.